Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. Today I have a tutorial in my Granny Square tutorial series and I am going to teach you how to do the continuous join as you go method. Now the continuous join as you go method is by far my favorite seaming method for a number of reasons. One, it's quick. Two, it's just like crocheting as opposed to sewing. Three, it reduces the amount of ends that you've got to weave in. Now, continuous join as you go uses the same joining color for all of the granny squares. So here I have used black. If in your project, all of your final rounds are gonna be the same color, this is a tutorial for you. However, if you are using a different color for all of your final rounds, such as the way I've done it in this blanket, then you need the join as you go method, which allows you to join the squares as you go, but use a different joining color. Both are really quick, both have their pros and cons, but today we're learning the continuous join as you go method. Now you're going to need a hook. I'm using a 3.5 mil hook. You're going to need your granny squares. I have a stash of them just here. And then you're also going to want some scissors and some a darning needle and quite possibly a pot to put your ends in if you collect them up. For continuous join as you go, you start at the top right hand side of a panel and you work your way across in rows over to the left and back again. Now when you are joining the granny squares you want to lay them out in the order that you're going to have them in your design. So I'm going to do that now with my granny squares that I want to join. Now I am actually joining together a sleeve for one of my designs called Victory. And so the panel is four by six granny squares in length. But just to make this easier to start with, I've just put the two rows. I always work from the shortest end. So because this is a sleeve and this would usually be the width and there'd be more length, I'm going to go in this direction to continue on to the other squares that I'm then going to set out. I find it easiest to do the short end first um, in terms of width rather than going in length. It just seems to build up quicker and so that's my preference. Now you start on the top right, so you will start in this corner here. You go along the top edge to the left, down the side of the granny square to the bottom left. At that point you then attach this granny square on and then you go up that edge to the top right corner, along the top edge, down to the bottom left, and then you continue all the way along, doing this motion, and then you will come across the bottom row before then continuing the motion along the next row. So let's get started. You're going to need your joining color, I'm using my usual glitter black. You can use whatever color you want to. And again, unlike continuous, unlike join as you go, which uses two different final round colors, we are using one color to join all of these granny squares together. So to get started, I'm going to pick up my first granny square and start in the top right hand corner and then I chain three to begin my next round of my granny square as if it was a normal granny square. I only place half of the corner in the first corner for reasons that we'll come back to. It's not the end of the world if you Put the full corner but it's easier to leave it as a half corner and I'm just continuing as if this was a regular granny square for now continuing the granny square pattern and you want to carry on with the pattern all the way along the top edge and down the left hand side so you place your corner as you usually would in this corner, work your way along, and 
and when you get to the bottom left hand corner again you just place half of the corner so your granny square will be half done like this so if you need to catch up pause the video here or at any point so that you can catch up you go at your own pace it's not a race in any way I'm here just press pause and play when you're ready so your granny square should look like this grab your second granny square and put it right side up to wrong side up like they're spooning place your yarn wrap your yarn around your hook and do your treble or double into the corner of the granny square that you want to join to and place three of them in there like so which means they're now joined in this weird way then you simply turn the two granny squares back to back so that their wrong sides are touching and at that point they now line up and you want to place a slip stitch into the back of this granny square between the two lots of clusters like so and then carry on with your granny square stitch in this square so here I need to place three trebles and once I've done that I slip stitch into the granny square that I'm joining to and then again place three trebles and slip stitch into the granny square that you're joining into. And then when you get to the corner, do your first three trebles or doubles and then slip stitch in between the corner. And when you have a look, it should look like this. So you started up here, you've worked your way around and you slip stitch into each of the spaces between to join the granny squares together. So I'm halfway through my corner at the moment. So I'm going to put my hook back in and then I am going to continue with this granny square. Now I am going to crochet along the top of the granny square and then down the left hand side before picking up the next granny square. So pause the video here and then meet me back when you are in this corner here. Okay, we have now joined our first two granny squares. We started here and we have worked our way around and we're now ready for our third granny square. So we hold it behind the square that we are about to join to, wrong side to right side, like they are spooning. Wrap your yarn around your hook and then place three trebles into this granny square. Three trebles or three doubles you pick your terminology and once we've done that we flip the squares so that they're back to back and then we begin slip stitching along the square that we want to join to as we join together the squares so you're continuing on the square that you're adding placing granny square stitch as you normally would for the fourth round of a granny square however you're slip stitching into the adjacent square as you go along Continue working your way along until that entire en end is joined to the next granny square, like so. And then you want to continue adding this round to the granny square as you normally would 
until you get to the bottom left hand corner. So if you work your way down to here and then meet me back here, we can go on to the next square. Okay, so I've now joined my third square to my row, which leaves one more to join. So again, you want to hold the square that you're going to join just behind, wrong side to right side, and place the treble or double stitch in here to secure it, followed by two more. At that point, you want to turn the squares back to back and begin slip stitching. Once you get to the corner and you slip stitch into the adjacent corner, now's a good time just to lay your work out flat and make sure that you've got all of the joins in the right place. So if you pull it tight like this, you can see the, the slip stitch is holding the granny squares together. And I always check at the end of each round because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through and realizing you missed a slip stitch because the only thing you can do is rip it back or fudge it by using a scrap piece of yarn. Now I am going to continue adding this round all the way to the bottom left hand corner. So pause this video here and catch me back just here. Okay, so I have now joined the first four of my granny squares for this row and there's no more to join. I want to go on to the next row. So what we now need to do is continue along this line so we can then finish off the row before coming back and adding on this next row. So to do that, put your, yarn, your hook back in your yarn and here you want to form a corner as you usually would on a granny square which is chain two and then three treble or three crochet to close off and then I'm quite simply going to continue adding this round to these granny squares as if it was a normal round. Now I know you're not quite working the round, you're doing a straight line but I'm going to make this round look as if I did go around in a square and to do that you add in the stitch as you usually would in the usual fashion and then when you get to a corner rather than chain two I simply slip stitch in between the two treble clusters that I'm pulling I simply slip stitch show you that again. The reason I don't place any chains is because I don't want the work to gape too much and so I find that if you slip stitch it gives it just enough to make it look as if you did do the two chain and continue the corner but the weight of all of the other granny squares pulls it out so it looks absolutely no different. So in the corner to show you again In between these two clusters here I'm going to simply slip stitch and that finishes off the corner and as you can see here it looks no different you wouldn't know that I didn't do any chains and you just continue your way across slip stitching when you get to a corner until you get to here and at this point I will meet you back here Okay tribe, at this point we have finished the row, once again I haven't completed the corner because we're not going to come back up this way at the moment, we are actually going to add on the next row. Now when you're doing continuous join as you go, you work from right to left, so in actual fact we are now going to add this square onto this one, but it's perfectly fine for you to rotate your work whilst you're working on it, you just need to bear in mind that you should be going right to left so not to take this square next because that would be the wrong one it's this square next um, and to add the second row you continue as you were before you join in the exact same method you place the square right side to wrong side wrap your yarn round and place three treble or two double into the first corner
then turn the squares so they're back to back and continue. Now it is very much like the row before, the only difference comes to the only difference comes at the corner. So I will just get to a corner to show you. So at the corner, place the first three treble or double crochet and then slip stitch into the adjacent square as you would expect. But then also slip stitch into the corner of the next square. Now the reason I do this is because it really helps to secure your work. The slip stitches are the only thing anchoring these squares together and so you want to make sure that they are nice and tightly held together. If you don't slip stitch there then you will find that you've got a gape hole just here. It will gape open a little bit and it will look unsightly and it really really bugs me. So always slip stitch into this square. It makes no difference when it's continuous join as you go because the colour is the same so you don't see that you slip stitch there. It just prevents the hole. Whereas when you slip stitch on, join as you go into the adjacent one, you can see on my squares where the colour on the yellow has gone across because I've slip stitched into the adjacent. I don't mind it, it might bother some people, but I'd prefer that than it gape because I haven't slip stitched. And you can see here, but I don't have any gaping in the corners and that's really important. If you choose not to slip stitch into the adjacent corner, then do it for all of them and then you'll have a consistent effect, but don't do it on some and not for others because then it will look odd. So once you've placed your two slip stitches for that corner, you want to continue to the edge which is technically the bottom left corner. So it should now look like this. You've started on your second row. This square is going to be joined in here. And I'm going to show you how that's done because now you don't just have the one edge to join to, you've got two edges to join to. All the difference is, is that you've got to place more slip stitches. So again, you join the granny square as I've shown you then when you get to the corner again you want to slip stitch into the corner you're adjoining to you can slip stitch into the one that is diagonal if you want to um, again you can't see it because the joining colour is the same and then make sure you do it into this one as well once you've done that, add in the remainder of the corner, but now you also need to slip stitch along the top edge here as well. So you now need to slip stitch as you work your way across this row so that it joins to the square directly above it. So it's now attached to the square on its right, you slip stitch into the top right square and now you're going to join to the square above it. I find it easier to work by folding them in half like this. Um, it keeps the square out of the way but it also lines up the join as you go, the slip stitch parts as well for you. apologise for the amount of hair and fluff I'm having to pick out. This yarn has been used and reused which is why it's crinkly and it seems to have collected a lot of my hair and a lot of everything else. I'm sure you know that feeling. 
Now I've gone along the top edge, again I'm going to slip stitch into the square directly next to it but also directly ad adjacent, diagonally next to it and continue and let me show you what it now looks like. So I have joined it to this square and this square with the slip stitches. I'm going to continue down to the bottom left corner before adding in this square here and this square here and then I'm going to meet you at the end just here. Okay tribe, so now I have added on the second row and I always just do a spread check to make sure that all of the joints are in the right place and they are which means I now need to come across the top edge so that I can add on the third row so remember when you get to this part slip stitch to create your corners and I will meet you here at the very end to let you know the next step okay tribe congratulations you've added the two rows that we set out to do now if this was your final row you would simply continue along this edge as if it was a final row like this creating a corner by slip stitching into this point and then you would slip stitch into the corner and then you would be finished but as i stated this is actually part of a sleeve that i am making and it's going to be six rows so i've got another four rows to add on so i'm not going to finish this off at this point and i just also wanted to make you aware there is another tutorial and it's how to join in the round but whilst you're here i can just simply say to you if you were to join in the round when you come to do this final end you would slip stitch into these squares and once you are done you would then have your sleeve done in the round very much like the other sleeve that i will show you you would then have a sleeve like this one where it has been joined continuously and also in the round in effect you have took a flat panel and then because you have put together that edge you've then created a tube just like this one and that means that you don't then minimize the amount of seaming that you need to do because the only seaming is when you actually put together the garment and again I have a tutorial of how to put together a garment it's actually this one that you can see here it is called Victory and I show you how to seam the sleeves, the shoulders and the side seams. So Tribe, thank you for watching. Make sure you check out the rest of the series and if you're finding these tutorials useful then please give them a thumbs up and if you've got any tutorial requests then put them in the comments below and I'll get those recorded for you. Thanks Tribe, happy making, see you soon.